It's been a difficult year. Really difficult. Let's go on a drive and talk about it. All through the time I've been doing this whole making silly videos and uploading them to the internet thing, I've struggled to translate my intermittent hiatuses in a way that protects my privacy. There's a balance that I have to strike. I want to let people know what's going on out of some sense of obligation, as if I need to explain myself when people ask questions about where I've been. I feel as if I owe that to the people who watch my stuff, the other creators that I'm friendly with, and the small but valuable group of people who have chosen to pledge a bit of their money to me. At the same time, I don't want to go into every little detail. I know that I don't owe anybody of you into all the private details of my life. Doing that would just be stupid. It wouldn't do anything to help me. So, as I said, I need to strike a balance. This video is not intended as a tell-all, nor is it intended as a list of excuses or even a, a sob story. I'm not sympathy fishing here, but the last few months in particular have been some of the worst times of my life. I haven't monetized this video, but with the way YouTube is now, you'll likely still get ads. I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do about that. And yes, this voiceover is scripted, but that's because I want to make the transmission of information as efficient as possible. I don't want to ramble and retread the ground I've already covered. But everything I'm about to say is what I'm comfortable sharing. I've been given permission to talk about things, and I'm making no embellishments. I know I'm just giving you my word on the internet, but I hope you can just trust me on that. I'm sick of putting up a front. It's time to be honest. Before September 2022, the main reasons for the breaks and uploads have been related to my mental health and negative personal events, plus a few traumatic and violent experiences that I won't go into to protect those involved. But starting in September, there's been a non-stop sequence of stressful events that have grasped the majority of my attention. My live stuff, the streams on my Twitch, and my commentary and production duties on SimSpeed TV, GSRC, and iRacing's channel, that's easier to deal with. It's live, it has a set time and duration, the pressure's on, and I can force myself into it without much issue. I can put on a brave face and be a showman for a bit. My self-driven creative stuff on this channel, though, that's been very hard. Max Bant's trailers are the only things I've been able to do because, well, they need to be done. But I haven't had the brain space for doing my other, more creatively driven content in the last few months. Once one fire was put out, another one started. The first one ignited at about 5 o'clock one morning in September when a man broke into the granny flat in my backyard where my brother lives. My brother was woken up and he confronted the burglar. There was a fight, my brother was hurt, and he escaped the granny flat to get my help. I was woken by him banging on my back door and screaming my name. I called the police and an ambulance and we got lucky. They caught the guy a few streets away. My brother suffered a busted eardrum and some cuts and bruises, which have all healed, but the incident shook him up, and he's still dealing with the mental after effects now, and I've been trying my best to help him through that. Just a couple of days later, our cat, Felix, had a huge medical issue, crystalluria, something that's common for cats. The food we were feeding him was introducing things into his system that made sediment, crystals, and stones build up in his bladder. He's okay now, and he's eating the right kind of food, but we were very close to having to say goodbye to him. Now, my brother and Felix are very close, and combining that with the trauma from the break-in, he was even more stressed and distraught than I was. For days, I was driving between our local vet and the overnight vet, my brother was trying to comfort Felix, and I was trying to comfort him while trying and failing to manage my own stress. When Felix was home with us, he was over at the main house with me, so I was constantly fielding questions about how he was doing and constantly keeping an eye on him, and it got a bit much to deal with. And that's not even getting into the vet fees. 
My mum and my stepdad then went on holiday to Southeast Asia, something they'd been planning for a while. While they were over there, my stepdad picked up salmonella in KL, which had turned to sepsis by the time they got to Thailand. He spent the better part of that fortnight in a hospital in Bangkok, being pumped full of antibiotics. As you can probably imagine, I was very worried. I felt powerless, with my parents far away and not being able to see them or help them. That worry was then compounded on the evening of October 17, when I came home from a shopping trip to find my studio, which I spent weeks and a good amount of my own money building, underneath what remained of the ceiling. The entire thing had just collapsed. Everything was coated in insulation dust. At this point, I was still trying to plug away and make my videos, but for some time after the ceiling collapsed, I was unable to make any kind of content at all. I couldn't even do my live stuff. Luckily, once my brother and I managed to get everything cleaned up, I found all of my essential equipment still worked, and I've moved everything to the room I'm in now. And as of the time I'm recording this, the ceiling has been fixed. No thanks to my insurance provider, who deemed that because the ceiling fell from the straps failing, and not a weather or crime related event, the collapse was not covered by my policy. That whole experience overloaded me, but there was more and worse still to happen. My parents returned all right from their holiday, but in November, my stepdad, already immunocompromised from his sickness in Bangkok, came down again, this time with COVID-19. He seemed to have recovered from it, but it turned out that COVID on top of the sepsis caused irreparable damage. His condition worsened and he suffered multiple organ failure. He'd been back in hospital for about a week by the 20th of December, when I tested positive to COVID myself. And just two days later, at about 12.20am, I got a call from my mum, where she told me that my stepdad had passed away. She was with him at the time and she saw him go. I wanted to go and be with her, but I couldn't. COVID kept me inside. I spent Christmas alone, and again I felt powerless. My stepdad's funeral was three weeks ago, and I'm trying my best to support my mum and be with her as much as I can. Please bear with me as I try to work things out. I'm, I'm finding all of these events very hard to deal with. I don't think I've ever been under so much stress over such a long period. It hasn't all been bad though. I'm no longer single. I've been in a relationship since July, before everything went down, and my girlfriend, it still feels weird saying that, she's just been incredible. Supportive, kind, and caring, and one of the very few reasons I have to keep going. In the near future, I'll be talking more about what I'm going to do on the channel going forward, but for now, I want to say thank you for making it this far. Thank you also to everyone who's stuck with me. And to anyone who has been asking questions about my whereabouts and my content or are disappointed by my absences, I'm sorry. I'll try to be better.